welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. Uh, we're going to pray. Thank God for his goodness and his mercies. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. And great is his faithfulness. It's not good. It's not okay. It's not normal. The Lord's faithfulness is what? It's great. All right. When it comes to the Lord's faithfulness, it is what? It is great. And we thank God for his goodness this morning. We want to get right into the Word of God, um, but we're going to pray first and really just ask God uh, to, to, to allow His manifest presence to, to be our guide this morning. Father, we thank You. Father, we, we worship You and adore You. Father, we give You praise. Lord, there's none other that is like You. Lord, we cannot do it without You. Lord, we depend upon you, O oh God. This is the day you have made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, your scripture and your word says we would have fainted unless we believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O oh God, thank you, O oh God, because of sonship this morning. We are children of the Most High. Our belief is to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We don't have expectation for the worst. We have expectation for the best. We know, O oh God, that you are deliberate. You're trying to take your people, O oh God, out of a, a, a dark and a howling wilderness and you want to put us in the high places of the earth. You're always taking us on an upward journey. You're always bringing us through while you're bringing us out. You're always doing a deeper work on the inside. Oh God, your word says, count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations and trials and the persecutions for it worketh patience and patience, steadfastness and steadfastness, endurance. And, and oh God, you said, Lord, we will have a hope that does not fail. Thank you, oh God, for continually to work on us that we will come to a perfection in Christ. Oh God, as we grow in the knowledge of your love, I pray, O oh God, today, everyone listening, Lord, Lord, we know your hand is not short this morning. We know it can reach and your ear is not deaf. We know it can hear. Reach out and touch. Lord, I don't know every situation, but you know. You know, O oh God, because your thoughts towards us are like the grain of sand upon the sea. Every hair, O oh God, in, the, in our hair, you can number them, O oh God. You know us because you formed us and you fashioned us. We are beautifully and we are wonderfully made in you, O oh God. You fashioned us, O oh God. O oh God, in your mind we were created and you brought us and we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. I thank you this morning that your eyes are upon us, Lord. You do not sleep nor slumber in looking over us. And this morning, we just take the opportunity to thank you, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory, to lift up your name. Your name is above every other name. Lord, we lift your name on high. Our rock, our fortress, our redeemer, in him do we put our trust, our shield, our buckler, our strong tower, O oh God. I thank you this morning. I thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' name. When you go to a game as a spectator, they put you uh, in the pavilion to sit down and to watch the game. You are in the pavilion. But when you are a player, you don't go and sit in the pavilion. I used to play cricket for Trinidad and Tobago, national under 16. When we go to the, the, the oval, when we go to the stadium, we did not go to the pavilion. We went to the pitch. The pitch is where the game is happening. The pavilion is where you watch the game that is happening. 
Let me say this to you. You don't get to sit in the pavilion of your life. You don't get to watch what is taking place in your life. You are on the pitch. You are in the center of this game. You have an opponent. You have to have a strategy. You have to have a team. You have to be trained. You, you have to have persistence. When, when it's different when you are in a pavilion. When you're in the pavilion, you, you could be out of shape. When you're in the pavilion, you don't have to get up early 6 a.m. in the morning to train. When you're in the pavilion, you can eat what you want. When, when you're in the pavilion, you can do anything that you want at any time that you want. It, it is not going to affect your ability to spectate. All you got to do is show up and make some noise and make some criticisms. Right? Now, I'm not against anybody who doesn't play sports, but I'm just trying to tell you it's a different cup of tea when you're in the pavilion than when you're on the pitch. When you're on the pitch, you have to be in the gym. When you're on the pitch, you have to eat a certain way. When you're on the pitch, you have to work out for, for a couple hours for the day, about five, six days for the week. When, when you're on the pitch, you have to do skill development. When you're on the pitch, you have to commit to certain hours of training. But when you're in the middle, it's a little bit different. Can I tell you this? A lot of you are taking a position in your own life. Like if you are in the pavilion of your life, rather than being in the pitch of your life, which means that you are in the center of the battle and the heat. You have to get down there and you got to live your life. And let me tell you something about prayer and spirituality. There, and there is no room for you to be a spectator. You have to be a participator. Apostle Paul said, I don't want to be a spectator of the things of God. I have to be a participator in the things of God. We are not here to spectate and see how life goes. You have to get out in the middle. You got to live your life by the word of God. You got to live your life by the truth you know. You got to go out there and you have to win. You are born to win. You are a victor. You have been given the victory. You have to go out in the middle and you have to fight for your, 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 your sanity. You have to fight for your marriage. You have to fight for your children. You have to fight for your health. You have to fight for your job. You have to fight for your business. You have to fight for your prosperity. You have to fight in your retirement. You have to fight for your investment. You got to fight. This life is a fight. The Apostle Paul says, I fought the fight. Don't tell me that you're coming out here to spectate. You have to be in the middle of the pitch and you got to be prepared to fight. Why? Because we have opponents. We, we were told about the devil, how he, how he roams the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Like a roaring lion, wanting to steal and wanting to kill and and wanting to destroy you got enemies you got people who are in the rulers of darkness you got principalities against you you got powers against you you got wickedness and and evil that is against you there is no time to spectate we got to participate you got to tra train you got to have the spiritual discipline. You got to work on how to, to fight in the spirit. You got to work on how to fight for your mind. You got to work on how to fight to keep your heart right. Sometimes you got to fight to close your mouth because of the things that want to come out at certain situations in your life when people try your peace. They try your love. They try your heart. This life is a fight. Apostle Paul says, I fought the fight. And I got to finish this race. I got to fight and I got to finish. Look at somebody say, put that down in your notes. Somebody put it in the chat right now. I got to fight and I've got to finish. There are no options for me. I was born to be a victor. I was born to have victory. I was born to be the head. I was born to be the tail. And ain't no weapon that is formed against me 
will prosper. I came out here to win. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to shout. I need, I need somebody to say hallelujah. I need somebody to say glory to God. I need somebody to say amen. Let, let, let's have a little bit of church here this morning on a Monday morning. I need you to start your week in the right spirit. I need you to start your week in the right mind. I need you to start your week in the right heart. We came out here to win. We did not come out here to spectate. We came out here to participate. And if I'm going to participate, winning is my only option. Because the victory has been given to me. The Bible says Jesus led by an example. 1 Peter 3 and 5. He led by an example when he went through his suffering. But the end was not his suffering. They thought he had end. The innings. It was about the, 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 the first day. They said, well, Jesus is out. The first innings of the game, he's out. We done whipped him. He, he's in a bloody pulp. We hit him 40 stripes. And look at him. He is weak. And look at him. Blood is flowing from, from all of the wounds that we have placed. <laughs> Those wounds are for nothing. And look at his flesh. We have injured it. If he really is the son of God, if he really is the Christ, then let him do what he knows to do. Let the power of God be made manifest and pull him out of this. But right now, we are in control. And Jesus is out on the pitch. And most of the people who are looking on says he's losing the game. The game is definitely going in the favor of Satan and the host of hell. And they, they're winning the game. And that's how some of your neighbors, friends, family, and co-workers feel. Sometimes when you have a down day, or sometimes when things are not working out, or they tell you no, or they tell you that you get rejected. And sometimes the people who are looking on, they gnashing with their teeth because they believe by the first innings, you're out. Look at her. She came and she's hanging her head. Look at the melancholy on her face. Uh, look Look at how, how her voice is low. She's lost her joy. She's lost her bounce. She's lost her chip in her step. Look at her. I thought she's a Christian. Why it is that she's going through this situation and it looks like she can't survive. It, it looks like she can't make it. Oh, it doesn't make sense for me to go to church. Look at them. They are always in church. And look when something is happening in their life. Look how they hang their heads. They've hung their harps. They can't even sing to the Lord a song. Go ahead and try sing to the Lord a new song. If, if you're so much a Christian, that's what the enemy is seeing when we're down and out. And many times in a game, you, you don't come into the game and from day one you start to win. Many times in a game, the, 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 the enemy has a little upper hand on you. And you've got to make sure that you hold your mind together. And you start talking to yourself during the game. If you look at a lot of sport players, they'll start talking to themselves. They're not waiting for an answer. What they're trying to say is, why so dumb, Castle? Oh my soul, in the middle of this game, you've got to put your trust in God because he has never failed you. He has kept you from the beginning. He has watched you from in your mother's womb. He has made sure that you are the one that has come through a lot of darkness. God's been there for you. God has not turned his back on you. God's been looking over you. He has brought you thus far and he's the same yesterday. He's the same today and he is the same forever and God will keep you and God's provision is his protection and he is brought you thus far and God's going to be faithful. Hold on. Keep pressing on towards the mark of the high calling. God's not going to lose his power today and you're not losing today. Come on somebody, you miss a good place to shout. And God's not going to make you lose today. We have the victory. You are on the winning side and when the chips are down, you got to talk to yourself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, somebody. I wish you all were in the same room with me so we can make some noise together and stir each other up right now. But I'm watching your comments right now. Make some noise in the chats. The chips could be down. And then they got the liberty and they said, well, if you thought the game was over, now the game is really going to be over because now not only did we put some stripes on him, we have legal permission to put him on a cross. Huh? 
If you thought we won the game, we didn't come to win. We want to destroy this team of Christ. We want where we finish with them, they're out the lead. They don't want to play anymore. They never sign up for another game. We want to destroy this team called Christ. And so they got the legal permission from the authority. And they laid him down on an old rugged cross. It was a tree. And they say, all right, you think we won? Let me show you what winning is. And they lined up some long nails and they put it on his feet. And when he cried out, the, the, the spectators say, yeah, we're definitely winning this one. And they line up his hands and they got some big ones for the hands and they took that hammer and they pounded it in. And when he exclaimed with pain and his body curl, the, 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 the opponent says, we've definitely crushed them now. And they say, well, that's not good enough. We don't want to just beat them. We want to destroy them and we want to put them out of the league. So make sure we get a crown, but with thorns. Because we want constant pain in his head, constant pain in his mind, constant pain in his thoughts so that he can't think straight while every part of his body is paining and while every part of his body is bleeding. And then somebody says, well, 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 that's not enough. They say, that's not enough. They say, no. They say, well, here's what we got to do. If we really want to destroy them, we, we got to pierce his side. It's not good enough for us to whip him. It's not good enough for us to wound him. It's not good enough for us to nail him. It's not good enough for us to just put a crown of thorns on their head. If we really want to destroy them, we got to pierce them on the side. And that's how some of your neighbors, friends, family, and co-workers are looking for you. When you're down, some of them are not satisfied with you being down. They want to pierce you from the side. And they ain't trying to do it with a spare. They do it with their criticism. They do it with their words. They do it with their unforgiveness. They do it with their condemnation. They do it with speaking against your destiny. They do it to your children. They do it in your business. They do it against your destiny. They want to pierce you on the side. Why? They want you to bleed to death so that you don't have the life to fulfill your vision. I'm just trying to tell you. Folks, can you still play the game? When the chips are so much down in your life, they have whipped you, they have wounded you, they have nailed you, they have put a crown of thorns on your head, and then they have pierced you on the side. Not just blood, but water. Every living thing that can give you life is now flowing out of you. And they say, well, look, they're done now. This team will never return to the league. Not only have we finished them, let's make this thing public and let's pull him up so the world can see. Let's lift him up so the world can see their shame. So the world can see their loss. Let's make sure we post it up. Let's make sure it's on the news. Let's make sure it's on social media. Let's make sure it's on Facebook. Let's make sure it's on Instagram. Let everybody know what we were able to accomplish. We didn't come to steal this trophy. We came to kill this team. And we came to destroy their very presence in this league. They will never return to this league, this league called Team Christ. Huh? How many of you will still wear the uniform of a team who goes through that? Huh? How many of you will still put on the garments that represents a team that has been publicly displayed and, and, and face the shit? How many of you will still say, I identify with this team? Or will you deny the team? Huh? Or will you betray the team? How many of you will still stick with the team that is going through the worst and still believe that you can have the victory? Huh? This is the type of example that you have. They say, well, look, we did what we did. Now that they're done, huh? All the people in the pavilion said, well, we can leave now because there is no way 
a team who, who goes through this can survive. It's a done deal. Have you ever seen a team get beat so bad that people don't even wait for the official result? People just start walking out of the stadium. They just walk out of the arena. They said, look, the lead is so big that there's not enough time for this team to recover. And even if they had the time, the way that the players are playing, I don't even feel they have the ability to recover in the time. It don't make sense for us to stay here. This is not a competition. This was advantage. Let's just leave the arena. Let's just go home. I'm, I'm out. It don't make sense staying here to watch this game. This game is done. That's what the spectators said. That one called Jesus, he's done. He's done. That's it. Let's leave. And the Bible says, hey, let's make sure that this body goes to a tomb. And not only that, just to make sure that nobody says this team came back sometime in the end and in sudden death. Heck, you hear what they call it? It's called sudden death. Extra time. They said, look, we want to make sure that there's no sudden death. We know he's dead. But just to make sure ain't nobody come with a story tomorrow on Instagram or Facebook to say they came back in the last second when y'all left the order, when y'all left the arena. We want to make sure we put a big stone, a big rock. Ain't nobody could come and steal this thing out because this thing will not make anybody move it. Why? Because we don't want the story to be changed. We want the story to say we came, we stole, we killed, and we destroyed. Huh? I told you, you're not in the pavilion of life. You are on the pitch of life. And that's how, that's how the game goes sometimes. But can I tell you something? <laughs> can I tell you something, Team Jesus? Can I tell you something, Team Jesus? We, like, we have a captain like no other. Come on, somebody. I, I play cricket and I, and I play soccer. And one of the things that gives you a confidence on the field is who's your captain. Let me tell you who your captain is. Your captain was sent uh, to lead you to victory. Your captain has uh, the right strategy. Jesus is my captain. Your captain has one of the best composures on the field. Your captain is one of the most skillful persons on the field. Your captain has the ability to get the entire team uh, synergize and their minds together and their hearts together. We don't have a normal captain. Our captain, he is the king of kings. Our captain, he's the lord of lords. Our captain is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Our captain is the door. Our captain is the bread of life. Our captain is the lily of the valley. Our captain is the bright and morning star. Our captain is the one, the only one, the chosen one. And I'm telling you, it took them three days when they thought team Jesus was down and they're going to think that you're down but I tell you it was probably late in the midnight hour when the divine support and the divine help nobody from the pavilion but somebody from the heavens started to, 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 to cheer this team on and started to reach down and to strengthen this team and started to send angelic blessings and angelic help and I'm telling you God's going to send help for you late in the midnight hour. God's going to send divine help for you. God's going to send assistance for you. God's going to send sustenance for you. God's going to send substance for you. And I can tell you, the stone was rolled away. Why? Because the grave clothes had to be folded and put aside. Why? Team Jesus will not be put out of this league. Why? We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the first and not the last. And no no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Huh? Hey, you ever see people on the next side, they were making noise at one time in the game. You ever see how they get quiet? When somebody else goes in and starts to beat by bowling. You ever saw in cricket where people making noise all of the time? I remember the 153, Brian Charles Lara. They say West Indies is down. That's it. They're done. 
and the little king of Port of Spain, <laughs> he came in and, and when Glenn McGrath was coming up, he started beating the socks off of him. He beat the shirt off of him. He beat the pants off of him. And all of a sudden, uh, all the people who came from thousands of miles uh, to support them, they were not noisy. They were loud. And all of a sudden, the, the camera starts showing their supporters and they're biting their nails. They, their hands are on their head. They, they rubbing and scratching their head. Why? Because something is changing in the game. And I'll tell you what's changing in the game. What the devil meant to, to take you out of. And what the devil meant for evil. God is turning it around for your good. Come on somebody. I need somebody to shout. I need you to shout. God will turn it around for your good. You ever see the game just turn around? You got that type of anointing this morning. Let me get, I, I didn't even get to go to the scripture. I'm so fired up about Jesus. I'm so fired up the fact that we have a captain that has led us to victory. You got to get victory in your, in your, the ethos of your life must be that you have the victory. Don't live a losing life. Don't lose your fight. Get up and train spiritually. You have to be able to discipline yourself. I'm out here to win. Huh? We out here to win. We out here to win. We out here to win. Let me give you the scripture because this was 2 Samuel chapter 21. When the Philistines were at war again, your life will always have wars. It says war again. War what? Again. Tag somebody in the chats and say, girl, we're going to have war again. A war is not new. You read the Bible, there are a lot of wars. But you're going to have a war again. There's some time, some season, you're going to have to fight again. Life is a fight. You think you're just going to get a season of a break because God is good. You're just going to have peace all the time. No. War is going to come. There's going to be a season. There's a time for everything under the sun. A purpose for everything under the sun. There's going to be war again. And there's there times of peace. David and his servants were with him. And they went down and they fought against the Philistine. The Bible says David grew faint. Sometimes in the middle of the game, you get weary. You get tired. You grow faint. Huh? You don't get to spectate in this season. You've got to fight. You gotta put your head down and you gotta fight. This is not, you gotta fight for your family. Fight for your own life, fight for your mind, fight for your man, fight for your mom. You gotta fight. And let me tell you something, you got a captain that is leading the charge. You have an example of how to go out there and win. This is me giving you a talk right now. We're in the locker room. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to go back out there and you're going to come up with a new attitude and you're going to watch every ball that they bowl and you're going to play every ball on merit and regardless of rain or sunshine, whatever, you go out there and when you come off of that field, you're coming off as a victor. That's the only option that we have. Victory is my... Look, put that on a t-shirt. Victory is my only option. Luke, what are you choosing today? Well, what are my choices? A, victory. B, victory. C, victory. D, victory. Circle any one for me. A, B, C, or D. Or do all of the above. If there was a multiple choice of life, the only thing that I'm going to shade and circle in the exam is victory. I don't want any other option. I am a winner because of Jesus Christ. He's given me the victory. Because of David's faintness, he had to have a squad help him in this battle. He said, look, we don't want you on the front lines again. It's not good to be weary in war. That's what war does. If you keep fighting war after war, you'll get weary. And that's why in warfare, you don't fight by yourself. One shall put a thousand, but two shall put ten thousand. And they floored a lot of giants. And when David came out of that situation, he said this in 2 Samuel 22. 
Verse number two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. Can I tell you this? God is in charge this morning and you've been given the victory. Father, we seal this word by the Holy Ghost in the hearts of men. May the seed of the word of God be planted in our hearts. The grafted word of God, may it save our mind, our will, our intellect, and our emotions. We trust you with everything. We rely on you in all ways. We thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do. We thank you that you have given us the victory this morning. We receive it. We receive it in no other name but in Jesus' name. God bless you real good. Have an amazing week. Wherever you go, do like Jesus. Do good. Do good wherever you go. God bless each and every one of you. Go ahead and share this with somebody. Share it on your own profile. Somebody who's going to be tremendously blessed. If you share it, be a witness this morning. Share it with them. Share it on your own profile. Tag somebody in the chat so they'll get to see it. But the most powerful thing you can do is to share Woman of woman at the well, she encountered Jesus, then she did what? She shared. So the city could come see the same person that transformed her life. God bless you. Have a great day. You took the form of man.